Oh, that's turned off the sign. Okay. Let's see if I can get back. Julie, can you hear me? No, she can't. It, 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 She's it, talking, but uh, I can hear you. you hey, you're at Sagrada Familia. I am. <laughs> Move your camera or your. Um, it's cutting you off. Yeah, you're. Your let me oh. see in like your forehead. There, there's. That's a little better. There yeah, a little better. Okay. okay. I, I mean. I'd rather see you than familiar. <laughs> familiar, not a familiar. Hi, Ethel. Oh, I love seeing everybody. Good, good morning. Good morning. I miss seeing everybody's faces. Yeah. And now we can see Julie's I, face a little better. Yes, yeah, that's good. 
And I love seeing the names by the faces. That is really cool. Yeah. And we need that every Sunday. Yeah, we yeah. do. <laughs> remember when we had the, the directory with pictures in it? Yeah. Gail will remember. That was a, that was a big undertaking. I suggested that at some point. I guess people remembered it was a big undertaking. <laughs> it was, but it's doable. Now it's even easier with all the, the new technology. Hey, everyone, as it is now 10 a.m., we will begin our worship service. Uh, I remind you that we have, um, we ask you that to mute yourselves as we begin and following the order of service, you can see when you can okay. unmute and mute yourselves. Okay. Okay. Try, try one of those arrows. Our virtual ushers to keep track. We do have a special surprise for you today. Um, wait and see. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Okay, guys, this is the part where you unmute yourselves and you respond loudly to me. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Kindle in our hearts, oh God, Christ's flame of love. May we shine forever in your temple, set on fire with your eternal light. Even your son, Jesus Christ, our savior and redeemer. And now we ask you to mute yourselves and sing loudly and joyfully with our music leaders this morning. Almighty God, to you all hearts are opened, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God be with you. And also, and also with, with, you. with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, when the Paschal Mystery established a new covenant of reconciliation, 
Grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. 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 A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing, along, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man, handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life, you will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus, God's, God raised up, and of that, all of us are witnesses. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be, Thanks to, God. be to God. Thanks be, Thanks be, be to God. God. You will 
A reading from 1 Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, Lord Christ. Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the religious authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You, Lord Christ.
The words that are spoken, Lord, are mine. May the words that are heard be thine. Amen. Some years, I think, we sort of wonder why the lectionary still has us behind locked doors a week after Easter. Some years at this point, we've let let in the dust, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, and on we move. Some years, we move from Palm Sunday to the crucifixion and on to Easter, on to those trumpets, the lilies, and the alleluias. But not so much this year. Not so much. This year, I suspect that most of us feel a fair amount of companionship with the disciples huddled behind locked doors. Behind locked doors consumed by anxiety and fear, wondering if life will ever again seem normal. The 20th chapter of John's Gospel tells the story of the first day of the week. And in John's telling, we hear five distinct reports of the resurrection. First, we get Mary Magdalene going to the tomb while it was still dark and finding it empty. Immediately, she reports back to the other disciples. At that point, Peter and the beloved disciple waste no time. They can't quite believe Mary, but they run to the tomb to find out what, in fact, is going on. The beloved disciple sees for himself that Mary's words are true. The tomb's empty. And Peter, in classic style, rushes into the tomb to confirm for himself its emptiness. The beloved disciple then also went in 
and we hear, he saw and believed. As the men sought their own understanding, the evangelist tells us, Mary stood outside the tomb weeping. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She explains to the angels that Jesus' body has been taken, and she doesn't know where to find it. As she turns from the tomb, again she's asked, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Again, she explains that the body of Jesus is missing, and she wants to find it and care for it according to the custom. But of course, of course, this second questioner is not the gardener, as she supposes, but is, in fact, Jesus himself. Blinded by grief and expectation of finding only death at the tomb, her eyes cannot see him until he speaks her name. Mary. Mary. He says her name and then her eyes are open to the wonder and, wonder and mystery of the risen Christ. Jesus then directs her to go and tell the others that he has risen from the dead and is ascending to God, his source and theirs. So Mary went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. Mary sees and reports on the empty tomb. The beloved disciple and Peter see the empty tomb. Mary sees the risen Lord and reports all that she has seen and heard to the followers of Jesus. And yet still, our gospel today opens. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for Fear of the religious leaders. Despite reports of empty tombs and a resurrection appearance, the followers of Jesus continue to hide behind locked doors, anxious and afraid. And into this place of confusion, uncertainty, shame and loss, Jesus comes. He meets them there. He appears and says, peace be with you. And then he commissions them to carry on God's mission in the world. Jesus says, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. While Jesus might have offered his followers peace and given them work to do, and they might have rejoiced and jubilantly told Thomas that they, not Thomas, but they had seen the risen Lord, well, You know, a week later, they're still in the house. They're still behind locked doors. They've seen, they know, they believe, but they aren't quite ready to step out into the world to love and serve the Lord. And so really, when we hear that Thomas wants to see Jesus, wants to touch his wounds, It's important to remember that all the witnesses to the resurrection came to understanding, belief, and action in their own time and way. The wonder is, and the important thing for us to remember and hold close in our hearts, is that Jesus 
without judgment met Thomas and meets each one of us where we are and in our need. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand. Put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. This second Sunday of Easter 2020, we too find ourselves wondering whether we really can trust in the promises of new life we have seen and heard. Are we really in Eastertide? Or are we stuck in some long and lingering Lent that threatens to be life forever? I suspect that many among us find ourselves anxious and fearful in our safe spaces. We might still be with Jesus on the cross praying, my God, my God, why, why have you forsaken me? We might be wondering where God is and when God's going to show up to bring healing and wholeness, love and life out of this mess we are in. This year, we all may be very clear about the resurrection, about the power of sin and death, but we may be far less convinced of the resurrection of the victory of life over death. As we named our questions and concerns in Bible study on Thursday morning, how long will these stay-at-home orders remain in effect? What can we do about people and places not establishing or maintaining stay-at-home orders? How can we stay safe? How will our loved ones be safe? When will we be able to receive a gift without having to wipe it down with disinfectant? When will we see smiles that aren't either behind masks or behind windows or projected on a screen? When will we pass the peace with wild exuberance? When will we share in the Holy Communion of Christ's body and blood? When will we join the Easter Bunny for church in our sacred space of St. Luke's? Will life ever be normal again? Like the early followers of Jesus, We each will need to find our own way to Easter. But we all will need somehow, some way to hear, to see, to touch new life before we believe. Bit by bit, piece by piece, step by step, our grief over what has, is, and will be lost must be owned and voiced and let go. Our expectations about what normal looks like will need to be released. And then, then our eyes will be opened so that we might see the risen Lord. Already it strikes me that this moment is opening our eyes in ways that will or might potentially lead us into new life if we are open to being transformed in Christ. Some of the learnings are tough. Despite the reality that the first Nova... The first novel coronaviruses to appear in the U.S. struck people with the means to travel. The data currently reveals that in this country, people of color 
are disproportionately becoming infected and dying of coronavirus. Nationally, black and brown people are two to six times more likely to die of corona than whites. I was on a faith-based organizer's call this week with a young African-American woman who leads Faith in Action's Live Free campaign in Chicago, working with incarcerated people and returning citizens. She started by describing their efforts to get nonviolent offenders and those who have never been convicted of a crime but too poor to make bail out of Chicago's overcrowded prisons. But quickly she pivoted and said, I was working for everyone else. And then I discovered that four of my family members were sick. My father, my grandmother, my cousin, and his wife. She went on to describe the lack of access to testing and treatment, the lack of well-resourced hospitals in Chicago's Black community, the inadequacy of care for African Americans in that city, and the likelihood that at least one of her beloveds was going to die. In Chicago, 50% of those infected and 70% of those who have died are people of color. In a call with Mayor Garcia this week with faith community leaders, he confirmed that Long Beach, like Chicago, New York, New Orleans, Los Angeles, is seeing disproportionate infection and death rates in our African-American community. It's not that we did not know before COVID-19 that black and brown people in the U.S bear a disproportionate share of suffering and struggle against institutional barriers in their efforts to live the abundant lives for which God created them. We knew, but the stark statistics of this moment lay before us inescapably the inequitable distribution of medical, educational, and financial resources in our country. The question before us is how will we redeem this death-dealing reality. In and through the coronavirus, how will we transform our racist systems and structures that allow inequitable access to the basics of life, food, shelter, education, and healthcare? But don't, don't let despair overwhelm you. COVID-19 is also teaching us joyful and abundant lessons. COVID-19 is inspiring and encouraging connection and relationship in new and renewed ways. In my family, we have Zoom dinners at least once a week and even managed a family movie night one night. I've Zoomed with college friends. I meet my sisters for happy hour at least once a week. John makes a phone call every day to someone from his life who matters to him. And yesterday, John gathered on Zoom with his fraternity brothers from college. As faith-based leaders, I've been in conversation in the last 10 days with Senator Kamala Harris, Black Congressional Caucus Leader Representative Karen Bass, and Mayor Robert Garcia. And of course, here at St. Luke's, We gather for worship, for formation, and for fellowship. Our calendar is so active that we threaten to overwhelm you with daily emails about opportunities to connect, to build relationship, to worship, to pray, to learn. And I know that you all are reaching out to one another. You notice who's not with us for our virtual worship. And you ask, you call, you reach out. And from our Facebook engagement numbers, we know that St. Luke's is reaching a far broader community than we ever imagined might want to hear what we have to say about the love of uh, the love of Christ is touching and transforming our lives. In the midst of this global pandemic, 
We are discovering new ways to build community, sustain relationship, and be the church. When we return to normal, whatever that might mean, may we remember what we are learning in these days about making and maintaining connections, and may we find ways to live creatively into our new normal. And last, but perhaps most abundantly clearly, our eyes have been open to the reality of our global community. As people on the planet Earth, our lives are inextricably linked. One person getting sick in Wuhan, China, does make a difference in our life. Do not send to ask for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. One meat packing plant in Iowa does make a difference to us. And all I need to do is look out my window to witness the economic consequences of cruise and container ships not sailing freely and profitably in and out of Long Beach and San Pedro harbors. The water is full of these vessels. I have a whole new oceanscape. Our global, social, political, economic, health, and environmental policies and practices are intertwined. And our new normal, our new normal when these COVID days are done, will require us to be more mindful of and responsive to our responsibilities as global citizens. This week, as we observe the 50th anniversary of Earth Day, previously imagined celebrations have been canceled. This will not be an exuberant Earth Day on Wednesday. As we mark this day in the midst of COVID-19's global trauma, We feel the pain of the crucifixion. We know the tragic loss of hundreds of thousands of lives, more than 30,000 in our own country. We see the devastation of communities and countries. We witness the destabilization of economies and governments. Maybe, just maybe, The loss, shame, and pain of this time will lead us into new life. The disciples hid fearfully in a locked room. They understood the realities of the crucifixion, but they had no clue what new life in Christ looked like. They could not imagine the ministry of reconciliation, service, and love for which Christ commissioned them. But Christ breathed on them. As in creation, Christ blew the spirit of God into them that they might live not just for themselves, but for the world, the world that God made. And so with uncertainty, and trepidation, they went back into the world to offer a vision of a new heaven and a new earth. And so I want to close with words sent to me by Edie Dillon, an elementary school classmate, from her article, Pulling Together in Rising Waters. Edie writes, Perhaps it is the Dalai Lama who best 
summed up insights of quantum physics as applied to the spiritual world to illuminate the limits of individual identity. Anything that exists and has an identity does so only within the total network of everything that has a possible or potential relation to it. No phenomenon exists with an independent or intrinsic identity. We are all made from atoms emanated from stars. Resilience and commitment grow from this deep knowing that we are not and have never been alone. What if we believed that there really is no hierarchy between human people and animal people and tree people and any other beings that make their home here on our precious blue planet? What if we committed to a place in the canoe for every single thing? What if we reached beyond ourselves to feel the pain of the earth as if it were our own and dealt directly with our sorrow rather than relinquishing ourselves to our distractions? What if we took seriously both the end game we now are in and the reality of reciprocity so that every action is based on understanding the radically interdependent relationship we share with our suffering planet? What if every day we breathed in the sorrow of the earth as if our hearts could accept Band, as if we could become as big as the sky and let our difference go. What if we pulled together as if our lives depended on it? Because, of course, they do. Amen. Amen. Now, let us affirm our faith using the words of the Celtic daily prayer. We believe in God, who is never confined to our imagining, is never in bondage to our understanding, and never kept within our dwelling places. Our God is mystery of divine and human bound together, of power and vulnerability, of crucifixion, and resurrection. Our God is the wonder of truth and compassion, of liberation and responsibility, of eternal wisdom and amazing grace. We celebrate this God who leaps free of all boundaries in love, stretching out beyond any barricades and in mercy, bending deep into fragile, human hearts.
Risen Lord, you greeted all you met with a word of peace. Give us your spirit to pray for peace for all people, for those infected with the novel coronavirus, and for the medical professionals caring for them. Peace be with them. For those who have lost their jobs or have closed their businesses, and for those working in service jobs, public safety, and health care under often unsafe conditions. Peace be with them. For those suffering from anxiety and loneliness due to physical distancing. Peace be with them. For those who work at the centers of power and for those that live in the margins. Peace be with them. For those overcome by war, violence, and denigration. Peace, peace be with them. For those possessed by envy, rage, and hatred. Peace, peace be with them. For those overwhelmed by stress, isolation, fear, illness, and despair. Peace, peace be with them. For those who desecrate the earth and those who cherish creation. Peace, peace, peace be with them. For those held down by sin and those lifted up by grace. Peace be For those who have betrayed our trust and for those that we have wronged. Peace be with them. For our friends and all who warm us with love. Peace be with them. For those who show God's love by caring for God's people and all creation. Peace be with them. For those that have died, especially Virginia Carson Young, Gary, and Betsy Shapiro. Peace be with them. For those whose joys and concerns we now raise in prayer and thanksgiving.
thankful that Becky and Becca could join us for live music this morning. Yes. For those who don't have the wherewithal to make the wonderful connections that Jane talked about and that I've discovered as well, reaching out to old friends and family and that a lot of people don't have the ability to do that. And it's enriched my life having it, so I feel badly for them. For those affected by abuse and violence, whose plights are hidden due to our, certain, our current situation. For all the parents trying to homeschool their kids. For a friend who has just received a positive diagnosis. My cousin who had to bury his wife on Friday with only four people in attendance not co corona um, virus related though, but such a terrible time to, for a death. For all those who wonder where their next meal is coming from. For the blessing of my niece, Brianna, on her 24th birthday this day. For all those who come to our shower program and for those who are able to volunteer to support the showers, clothes, and food we provide each Saturday. For the medical researchers, Lord, please inspire and use them. For all those affected by COVID-19, Beryl, Nathan, Mike, Jean, Nancy, Karen, Bernie, Eunice, Joan, Vilma, Ron, Sue, Harry, Gracie, Andrew, Alan, Patrick, Cassidy, Jonks, Isaac, Rose, Juliana, Vel Vandaloo, Rita, William, Sam Shoemaker, Benjamin Shore, for our elderly and shut-ins, for our homeless brothers and sisters, for all who refuge, for all refugees and immigrants, for an end to violence of all kind. For the church, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for our bishops, John and Diane, for our clergy, Jane, Nancy, Dean, Beryl, and Steve, for our interns, Nancy and Suzanne, for our vestry and staff. For those we have named aloud and for those we hold in our hearts. Peace, Peace with them. With them. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign now and forever. Amen. 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 And now unmute yourselves as you are able and join us in the Lord's Prayer. <laughs> Our Father, 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 Father,
as people begin to mute themselves. Are there any special blessings for today? Any birthdays or anniversaries? What should we pray for? Unmute yourself and today's let us know. My birthday is today. Yay, Eric! Anybody else? It's Sue's birthday. Can, can you repeat that, please, Susan? You cut off. It's my birthday. Another birthday. Yeah. Yay, Susan. Good birthday. Woohoo. My daughter's 11th birthday is on Wednesday. What's her name? Her name's Madeline. Madeline. All right. My granddaughter Ellie's birthday, second birthday is Friday. Okay. All right. My niece Brianna, she turns 24 today and the first year of being a mom. Ooh. It was just Melissa's birthday, but she's chasing James around. <laughs> That's all right. We can maybe all the more reason to pray. Any other birthdays or anniversaries? Okay. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, in these times where our lives have been turned upside down, we need to find those little signs of life, those little things that bring laughter to our hearts, to bring smiles to our faces. So on this day, we lift up in prayer every single one of your children who are celebrating birthdays. For Eric, for Susan, for Madeline, Ellie, for Brianna, for Melissa, for all those that we may not even know are celebrating or could not join us this day, gracious God, we ask that you bless them. Bless them with a house full of love. Bless them with good health. Bless them with inspiration to create and to be innovative. Bless them with music so that they may dance and sing and praise you in every way. Gracious God, on this year, let everyone who is celebrating a birthday know that they are your beloved children, that you are with them in their times of sorrow, that you weep with them, but that you also celebrate with them in their times of joy. So gracious God, bless Eric, Susan, Madeline, Ellie, Brianna, Melissa, and everybody else because you rock. Amen. 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 Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And now for everybody else, may the creator bless you and keep you. May the beloved compassion face, face you and have mercy upon you. May eternal spirit continence be turned to you and give you peace this day and always. Amen. 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 And the peace of Christ be always with you. Alleluia. 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 Also with you. <laughs> we ask that you uh, stick around for our video presentation. And after that, we will stop sharing screen and everybody can share peace and high five on the screen and have a fun time. So do not. Go anywhere. From this distant vantage point, the Earth might not seem of any particular interest. But for us, it's different. That's home. That's us.
Consider again that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you've ever heard of, every human being that ever was, lived out their lives. The aggregate of our joy and suffering. Thousands of confident religions, ideologies, economic doctrines. Every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization, every king and peasant, every young couple in love. Every mother and father, hopeful child, inventor and explorer, every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician. Every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species. Lived there, on a mode of dust, suspended in a sunbeam. visited by the inhabitants of one corner of this pixel on the scarcely distinguishable inhabitants of some other corner. How frequent their misunderstandings, how eager they are to kill one another, how fervent their hatreds. posturing, our imagined self-importance, the delusion that we have some privileged position in the universe, are challenged by this point of pale light. Our planet is the lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark, in our obscurity, in all this vastness. There is no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves. The Earth is the only world known so far to harbor life. There is nowhere else, at least in the near future, to which our species can migrate. Visit, yes. Settle, not yet. Like it or not, for the moment, the Earth is where we make our stand. It has been said that astronomy is humbling and character-building experience. There is perhaps no better demonstration of the folly of human conceits than this distant image of our tiny world. To me, it underscores our responsibility to deal more kindly with one another. And to preserve and cherish the pale blue dot, the only home we've ever known. unchangeable power when you fashioned the world the morning stars sang together and the host of heaven shouted for joy 
open our eyes to the wonders of creation and teach us to use all things for good to the honor of your glorious name. Amen. 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 And now let us all see each other's faces and be filled with joy. Oh, wow. Yes. Well, look how mighty beautiful y'all be looking this morning. <laughs> <laughs> you will get an invitation to join in a room um, for a virtual coffee hour. Stick around, get to know somebody new. Wave hello to everybody who has joined us on Facebook Live. Facebook Live. Shout out to Betty Phillips, who is joining us from New York, because she, oh, she was on Facebook. So please join, and I will stop streaming now. But join your room. Now you're not muted. Mm -hmm. So, we're live. We can hear, they can hear us, so we can hear them. We can hear you. <laughs> Peace. All right, so join your room. Can you join? Mm -hmm. What does that say? Breakout room.